In this video, we're going to talk about cause and effect. Unlike in your process essay, here we're concerned with more than just what happens. When talking about cause and effect, we want to know why it happened. We're dealing with logic here, so some statements might seem obvious, but they're part of a larger process that shows our intellectual work. One thing we have to establish is that any effect must have a cause. This is a rule we can observe and then generalize to our entire universe. Anytime something happens, there must be a reason that it happened, some pre-existing cause to every effect. A common example is that of a broken window. If you see a broken window, an effect, something must have broken it, a cause. Now it gets a bit more complicated. There are multiple types of causes. First, there is the main cause, or the cause that is primarily responsible for any given effect. You can see how this might be a matter of some debate. Outside of the main cause, we have contributory causes, actions or events that played a role in the effect, but a less important role than the main cause. Main causes and contributory causes are related by their significance to the event, but immediate and remote causes are related by the time between their occurrence and the occurrence of the event. An immediate cause is a cause that directly precedes the effect. Because it is so close by, it's pretty easy to recognize. A remote cause, on the other hand, happens well before the effect, so it may be harder to recognize. This is where things get really tricky. Sometimes the main cause can also be a remote cause, and the immediate cause can be a small contributory cause. To tell the difference, we have to think carefully, think critically, and have all the details. Let's look at an example. Say unemployment has fallen by 3% over the last year and a half. That sounds great, right? The immediate cause is that after new policies were enacted by the government, businesses added 200,000 new jobs. Can anyone say incumbent re-election? But what about the remote causes? What if people have stopped actively seeking jobs and so are no longer technically considered unemployed? What if people have chosen to retire, move in with children, or move back in with parents after being unable to find a job? What if students are seeking higher and higher degrees, mounting up loan debt, just to avoid joblessness? Other possible remote causes relate to measurements, societal changes, or even the seasons. It's actually really hard to tell if there has been improvement or not with such limited data. So even though it is tempting to draw a cause and effect relationship, in this instance, we really can't. One final note on misattributing causes, post hoc reasoning. This logical fallacy is when you assume one thing is responsible for another just because it comes right before it. For example, let's say every time I see Sally, I get sick. I might assume she makes me sick, but what if prior to seeing Sally, I enter into and win a waffle eating contest? See, just because my sickness follows seeing Sally, doesn't mean it can fairly be attributed to her in a cause effect relationship. Thanks for watching, and make sure when presenting evidence in your essays, you're carefully constructing cause and effect.